Um, good evening, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Please, can you hear me? You can type yes there for me. Great. Um, I trust you are all doing well. You had a good week. And so far this weekend, you've, even though you must be tired by now, um, you still have, you still had a good day. Uh, so last week we met and we had a fair, some discussions and I asked that you, uh, finish reading the slides that I had given to you and then also watch um a recording of a, a lecture that I had had the day before with the nurses. I hope you did that. I hope you 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 were able to read and also you were able to watch during the week sometime during the week okay so what we are going to do today um is quite simple i am going to take uh, any questions you might have you might have from what i asked you to do last week or any question at all so that um uh we'll do the quiz as i had mentioned and uh, by the way let me ask i see new people joining the the telegram platform i don't know is it that they they were students and um they did not join earlier or they are new students i'm i'm at a loss here because just today, I've seen quite a number of students joining the platform. Quite a, a, a lot. Yes, just today. And then yesterday as well. Are they new students or they, uh, they were your mates and they, they now have Telegram on their, on their phone. So they are, they are now joining. I'm, I'm at a loss. Can one of you explain to me? Because during lectures, I have never gotten beyond uh, 500 students. Um, majority of the time, you are just around 400. So I don't know where all those people are from. By the way, kindly um if you have any question based on what we discussed last week and what I asked you to go through last week, if you have any question from there, please. Um kindly bring your question. You can raise your hand, okay, and I'll ask you to unmute. Or you can type your question in the chat, and then we would um, take it from there. So if you have any question, let me know. Yes, Anastasia, please, you can unmute. Good evening, sister. Good evening. Sister, please, did you say any question? I want to ask a question, not on what you learned last week or what you have watched. Okay. I'll try if I can also answer. Uh -huh. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Sister, uh, the pharmacology slides you have sent, we mm -hmm. came across uh, the EB50, the TB50, the IC50 and then the ID50. Can you please elaborate on that for us? Um, 
the pharmacology slides I shared with you. You've come across what, please? CD50. Hello? Hello? Yes, you can see, see the, uh, that, that kind of thing. The, uh, yes, sir. Sister, 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 sister. Uh, yes, sir. No, it, it, your line keeps on breaking, but I got TD50. Oh. As in T uh, for I, toy, I, D for dog, and then 50. Yes, I'm talking about the drug, uh, the specificity you said. It. Yes. Drug specificity where you have the EB50, the PB50, the IB50, and then the CD50. Can you please explain that a topic for us? Okay, um, I'm sure that is what one of the things that Dr. Eboa was teaching you. Um, let me see. Let's be sure that that is what you are looking for. And then um, I will explain. Just let me look for the said slide. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I have seen it. So let me just uh, share that with you. And then I'll try. It's one of the things that Dr. Eboa All right, please, can you see the screen? Let me enlarge it a bit. Please, can you see my screen? Okay. And I, I, I'm, I'm sure that is what uh, um, I'm putting the name. But I'm sure that is what she's referring to. Anastasia, yes. Anastasia, I hope this is what you are referring to. Yes, sister. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me quickly explain this to you. So basically, the you to measure the drug's action, uh, you cannot aside using the responses that the the patients would um sort of express you would we use these uh, parameters to measure the drugs action okay so when you say the um ed50 okay it's the effective dose the ed50 is the effective dose and this is the dose that causes a therapeutic response in 50% of the population. Meaning that, let's say you, you have a drug X and you have a dose of 200 milligram. Okay. And this 200 milligram, you have a population of, let's say, uh, 300 people. So if you give this drug 200 milligram, to these 300 people, okay, if 150 of the people that you give the drug to are able to show the therapeutic response, as in, let's say that the drug is supposed to cause a relief of pain, okay, it's supposed to cause a relief of pain. If I give this 200 milligrams and I have 50% of the 300 human beings, that is 150 of them, expressing that they actually got the relief from the pain, then I will say that the 
if ED50 of this drug is 200 milligrams. Okay. Then EC50 is the drug concentration. Okay. So effective concentration. So with that one, we are looking at the concentration of the drug that um that will cause fifty percent of the maximal response. So you need to see a a response of um you, you need to see that a lot of the people um how do I put it? A lot of people who you are using that drug to treat, you expect the maximum res response to be um, a relief of headache without um, without any uh, side effects. You expect that within, let's say, one hour after taking the medication, you expect the relief, complete relief of headache. The concentration that give that fifty percent of the maximal response. That is what we refer to as EC fifty. Okay, then the IC fifty is the concentration that, or uh, or in this one, the I there is the inhibitor. So we are looking at the drug concentration of an inhibitor. That will cause fifty percent of an inhibition. So, um, inhibition is sort of you are preventing something from happening. Okay, and some for some of the drugs, the 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 as their mechanism of action is to inhibit an enzyme or to inhibit um a receptor. Okay, so. What concentration of the drug will cause 50% inhibition? So something like what concentration of the drug will prevent 50% of the, um, um, that will cause 50% of the inhibition. So it will like 50%, will prevent 50% from maybe the drug session. I don't know if I'm putting it well. Trying to use other words to explain is a bit um, hard. But I hope you get the inhibition one. IC50 is the concentration of an inhibitor that will cause 50% inhibition. So let's let let me see if I can use a, a normal a, a, a simple anal analogy to to explain it. So let's say you you have some people who are trying to demonstrate. You get some soldiers or policemen to come in and prevent them from um, demonstrating. Okay. Now, that's the inhibition. You are sort of preventing them from doing the demonstration. So, what number of the policemen would you need to prevent half to do that prevention, half of it? So if you have, let's say, 100 policemen as against, say, um, 300 demonstrators, how much, how many of the policemen, okay, if 50% of the policemen are able to prevent that population, then we say that that concentration, that 50 policemen, okay, is the EC50. I don't know if, I hope I've explained it at this point for you. Okay. Then the TD50 is the dose that causes toxicity in half of the population. So just like um, the ED50, um, the dose that will cause the therapeutic response in 50% of the population. If you give, um, if you have a population 
and you give a certain dose and it causes half of that population, 50% of that population to experience uh, toxic effects, then we say that dose is the uh, toxic dose. Okay, that's the TD50. So let's say you have a group of people, 300 again, you give a dose of 500 milligrams and you have 50% of the 300, so 150 of them experience toxicity. Then you say that the 500 milligram is the toxic dose. Please, I hope you, you get me. Uh, Anastasia, have I answered your question? Anastasia. Hello. Anastasia, I hope I've answered your question. Any other question? Okay. Any other question? Abigail, yes, please you can unmute. Sister, please, can you take the IC50 again? Okay. I'm saying that the IC50, it is the drug concentration of the inhibitor. So let's say you have drug X, and this drug is an inhibitor. Okay. If you give this drug and you have... um a concentration of that drug, let's say um, the concentration is 10 milligram per um, liter, okay? If that concentration is able to cause 50% inhibition, I see be able to inhibit the enzyme or receptor, 50% of it, then we say, that concentration is the IC50. So it's the concentration of an inhibitor that causes 50% inhibition. I don't know if it is okay. If the AGY, please, you can unmute. Sister, please, I want to know if this is all about half-life of a drug. No, this is not about half-life of a drug. This is measuring drug action. And this is actually um, in pharmacodynamics. Uh, it's something that Dr. Yebo uh, taught you. Okay. So somebody has a question and... I try to explain it. So it is not about half-life. Half-life of a drug is the time it takes for the drug to, um, um, for 50% uh, of the drug to be eliminated. This one, we are looking at um, measuring drug action. We are looking at concentrations or doses that will produce a certain effect. Okay. I hope uh gifty well, I hope you get what I just said. Yes, please. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. Please, any other question? Any other question? Ophelia, please you can unmute. I have just a few minutes left for this part. Then we'll go on. When we, we are about finishing, we'll do the quiz. Ophelia, please, you can unmute. Ophelia, please, we can't hear you. Uh, 
can you try typing? Hello, Ophelia. Unfortunately, I don't know if it is my end or everyone else can't hear. Sister. Yes. Uh -huh. Please concerning what Sister Anas asked, there is a graph that follows. I, I, I want you to um, elaborate a little hey. bit of it for me, please. My, my, my sisters, that is not why I'm here this evening. Okay. Uh, it is not that I cannot explain. But we are here for a reason. And I can't go over what Dr. Iwa has taught you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if I start, we will not finish. And I cannot do my part. So okay. if you want an explanation on that graph, please, I would advise you contact me later. Okay, okay. sister. Okay, mm. sister. Um, you, you can send me a message and the, and we'll talk about it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if we are supposed to do, we will not be able to do. Okay, thank you. Sister. You are most welcome. Um, any question? Hello? All right. Um, if you don't have any other question, this evening I want us to start some another discussion on drug administration, and uh, we are going to talk about this for some uh, for the next couple of weeks, and um, it's a lot. So, um, I will share the slides with you, and you we'll talk about about it um okay i do believe that as midwives whichever area we find ourselves we administer medications all the time and so we are going to take a, a look at some of the things we have been doing and um, see how best we can we can do to make this whole process more safe for our patients. Okay. So drug administration, we do it all the time. It's one of the routine things that as nurses with wives we do. So um every day you go to work you would administer some medication to a patient you yourself as individuals as families we administer medications all the time if we do it very well um we can restore the health of a patient we can prevent patients from getting worse we can actually heal we can cure all of that is possible if we do drug administration well. If we don't, then we can sometimes we end up killing the patient. And that will result in a whole lot of things. So as midwives as we are, um, it's important that we take critical look at the way we administer medications. Now, we should note that we don't just care for the pregnant woman. You care for a pregnant woman in a developing uh, uh, fetus in, in her womb. You care for the woman who is breastfeeding and invariably the child who is breastfeeding. All in all, it extends to the whole family because in our part of the world, sometimes how the way we are treated, we end up even going to do it for our friends. So you go to the hospital, you get some treatment, it works for you. You go back home. Oh, a friend comes to you and they experience certain things. 
and they you also um tell them oh i went to the hospital they gave me these medications so you too you can use them we do that all the time and so if we don't take care we would end up killing our patients some of them we kill them right away some of them we kill them slowly i've had unfortunate experience of um some of these things uh, personally and through the experiences shared by students about a week ago a patient uh, one of my projects two of my project students came to my office and um what they intend to do is to look at medication administration errors so i asked them what is the problem at the said facility where you want to do your project work and they go ahead and tell me about how um a nurse, a rotation nurse, who was assigned to administer, give it an injection to a child, instead of administering it intramuscularly, she went ahead and administered, give it an injection intravenous, and the child died. So these are errors that are very important. Unfortunately, nothing happened to the nurse. They didn't, they covered it up. And so um, it wasn't brought out there. I, when I asked, is the family aware that it was the injection that you gave that killed the child? He said, no, they did not even inform the family. So a lot of these things are happening in our various hospitals. Um, and if we don't take care, uh, some of us might end up losing our licenses uh, to practice or even going to, to, to jail. Okay. So we need to take this procedure very, very seriously. Okay. To be able to do it well, you need to understand the basic principles of pharmacology. So you need to understand pharmacokinetics very well. You need to understand pharmacodynamics very well. You need to understand pharmacotherapeutics very well. You even need to understand prescription writing very well. Otherwise, then you would be uh, you would not do the procedure well. If you don't know where and how the drug is going to be absorbed, you may end up being what somebody did many years back. Instead of taking uh, in certain vaginal pastries, she ended up swallowing seven days of pastries. So your knowledge in pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, pharmacotherapeutics, and the rest is very important. If you don't know the roots, you are going to mess up. And where the, the, the even the forms of drugs, if you don't know, which one you can administer where, then you are going to mess up somebody's life. Okay. So it's important that you need to understand the basic principles of pharmacology. And that's why go through pharmacokinesis, pharmacodynamics before you talk about drug administration. It is not for fun why we do that. But basically, if you have an understanding in that area, when it comes to talking about drug administration, then you 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 are able to uh, focus on it and do it well, and you, uh, um, your patient will be safe. Then to be able to understand it, uh, the 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 drug administration process and do it also very well, you need to understand the various routes. You need to understand the techniques, even the way we swallow oral medication, there is a technique to it. You need to know how to swallow the oral medication. If you can't throw your head all the way back, put plenty water in your mouth and put your tablets or capsule in it, you find it difficult. You may end up choking. So there is a way we have to do it. We need to be able to do it well. Know the roots, know the techniques so that you can teach your patient and do it uh, for your patient to achieve the maximum results.
we also need to understand usage calculations. And I was surprised a couple of weeks back, about three or four weeks ago, I went to do, I was an examiner and um, students were struggling with um, simple calculations, measuring simple um, reconstituting uh, uh, drugs and then taking out the correct volume. All right. And then I am like, hey, so what if I'm the patient who, who is supposed to receive this medication? One of them actually, instead of taking, I think, um, after the calculation, she should have taken, I think, 7.5 milligrams of the drug, but she withdrew after missing everything. She withdrew all 10 mils of the drug going to give to the patient. So we need to know how to calculate the doses and calculate it very well. We need to, not just for adults, but also for pediatrics, for children. We need to know the various formulas we can use. We need to understand why we even calculate the doses um, the way we do for children and not the same way for adults, okay? So we will look at dosage calculations very well. Um, techniques for injection, we also have to know these techniques. Some of them will go through them. You are already practicing midwives, so there are a lot of them that you know. Um, then we need to go through the 10 rights of drug administration. Majority of the time, if we go against these rights, we are most we are going to cause an error, a medication administration error. Anytime we go against the 10 rights, you cause an error. Okay. Then we should be able to educate the patient very well. I was in class yesterday. Uh, I asked a, a student, I have been discharged. Educate me on the medications that you have given to me. And the way she educated me, if I follow what she is saying, um, I am, I'm going to cause trouble for myself. Uh, education, we don't even mention the name of the drugs to the patients. When some of us do, we don't mention, we don't say it right. We don't tell them the exact times they are supposed to take their medications. We just say, oh, take one in the morning, take one in the evening. What time is evening? In Ghana, by 4 p.m., people start greeting good evening. So if you say take one in the morning, take one in the evening, and the patient chooses that, okay, it's morning. Okay, let me take my medicine at, say, 7 a.m. It's evening. Oh, by 4, it's evening. I will take my next dose at 4. The patient has not done any wrong. You didn't tell the patient that they are supposed to, there is supposed to be a 12 hour interval between the morning and the evening. You didn't say it. So if the patient goes and take morning and evening at 7 a.m. and 4 p.m., it is you who have done the patient's harm. It is not the patient. The patient does not know. That's why they come to us. So it's important that we educate the patient well. It's also important that we know and understand all our hospital protocols. Every hospital is different. I remember last semester uh, I was teaching and there was, um, we we're having a discussion on magnesium sulfate. Okay. Magnesium sulfate, um, there is a protocol for it. All of us know. But when we were, sh um, I mean, people were sharing their experiences when it comes to um, the use of magnesium sulfate. And one of them said in their hospital, the protocol is slightly different. Okay. So if you don't know the protocol that is in your hospital, you may go against it. And that may also cause trouble for your patients. Okay. Then you should also be familiar with the medicines that are frequently prescribed in your practice. As midwives, what are the common medications that are prescribed? 
from antenatal to postnatal. What are the range of medicines that are prescribed? You cannot know all the drugs. I don't think even a, a pharmacist know all the drugs that are in this world. You can't. But at least the ones that are prescribed in your practice as a midwife, the ones that are commonly prescribed in your facility. If you go to certain hospitals, some hospitals, you find, a, a, let's say, it's a frozen. In other hospitals, you may not find a frozen day. Okay. So know the, hus the, 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 the medicines that are prescribed in your practice and what are common in your hospital. Know everything about them, from their names to how they are um, prescribed to how they are administered. If it's supposed to be reconstituted, how much do you need to reconstitute? What fluid can you use to reconstitute? When you reconstitute, how are you supposed to store it? All that information is important. So you should be very, very familiar with the medic medicines that are prescribed in your facility, okay? And then in your practice as well. Now, you need to prepare for drug administration. You don't, you don't just get up and say, I'm going to administer the medication. No, you need to be prepared. You need to prepare. Um, one of our students yesterday said, oh, the hospital that I went, when it is time for, please, some of the things that we I'm going to say, um, please forgive me, don't be offended. I, I, for the past year or so, I have not practiced, okay? A lot of things may have changed. And so I pick experiences from our students, from you, students. And then the regular students. So when they go to the ward and they come back, we ask them to share their experiences, what they saw um, in the hospitals. Um, we look at it, we analyze the situations, look at what is good, what can we learn, and then what is not so good. And so we need to correct um, um, those uh experiences so that they don't go and do the same things when they come out. So please forgive me if I say something and it is not happening in your facility. This is the experience one of them shared yesterday. So she said that for her, um, she did mostly night duties because she wanted to learn things that happened during the night as well. So in the hospital that she worked, um, when it's time for drug administration or when the nurses come, not just when it's time for drug administration, when they report to duty after handing over, they just sit down with all the patient bedside chats, looking at what's um, going through and then looking at what happened during the day on the limbs. Okay. Then they will do something like chat rounds. Okay. Um, so they will get a piece of paper, write down their medications, the names of their patients, bed numbers, and um, the medications they are on, the time they will receive the medications and all that. And then they will chat. Okay. They will chat. Before even it is time for the medications, they will sit down, do all the chats and on the drug administration chats puts them down, and then when it is time, they go with just that sheet. Okay, I don't know. Is it something that is happening? Can somebody uh, corroborate or uh, deny that this is what is happening in some of our hospitals? Do we do that? Whether it's night or afternoon or uh, morning? Whichever shift is it, it is. Do we do that? All right. M uh, Mary, please, you can unmute. Sister? Yes. I, um. Okay. With the limbs, uh, I don't think it's possible. Because mm. may, be, uh, as a student, you don't have an account to access. And maybe use the staff 
We open no, it is the staff who was doing it. It is not the yes. students who was writing. Yes. It is the so, staff who opens write down everything. Uh -huh. So with the limb saying, mm -hmm. if you are entering vitals, with the vitals, let's say you are checking vitals for 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And you 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 monitor the vitals at 5 30. You can decide to change the time to 6 p.m. and enter it. But with mm -hmm. medication, if you even change the time. And, and and enter what will be recorded is the exact time not the time you change so with medication you can't save it you can't save and chat before the time it will be recorded so any nest when you hand over they will see that you didn't save at the right time it will be recorded you can't cheat the length for the medication side you can't do anything with the time so i don't i think that one is not possible no, so she was saying that they would chat on the drug administration chat, the paper. Okay. Uh huh. Then so later on, after they have finished administ administering all the drugs, then they will come to the limbs and do the chatting. But on the drug administration chat itself, the paper, they will chat everything. Uh, uh, Mary. That's what I'm asking, if it happens in our various hospitals. Uh, for my facility and my unit, uh, we don't do that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, let's ask Gifty. Gifty, you can unmute. Okay, sister. In fact, what you're saying in my facility, Personally, I do some. Okay. That is what some people do the right thing, do, but sometimes you have a lot of cases and you're alone. Maybe cry or a pregnant woman alone with the rotation of a student. Mm -hmm. So, like, you, you have to, you want to do it that so that you, 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 are, you are able to finish up before you hand over. Even though we are using the computer system. Most mm -hmm. of the times, we don't normally, because we are using the paper too, because the doctors may not go there and check, so we want to hear mm -hmm. what wrong. So we, we prefer the, in my maternity, in the maternity unit I'm working, mm -hmm. we actually use the sheets, but on the PC, we don't use the sheets. Okay. And it's, sometimes you're alone. In my facility, I am in a hospital, but we are not enough as midwives so that's what we do so that we're able to mm. finish things up earlier that one is true if she, the, the student told me that there is true it's, it's happening especially in my all family. right all right thank you thank you very much uh mm. let me ask grace grace ganza please you can unmute As she's rightly saying, it is true. At first, I, I didn't notice this thing. But one day, one new staff who was posted to our end, one day came on night duty and the place was very choked. So I saw her taking a piece of paper and writing bed one at 10 p.m. and serve this bed two. So I was like, hey, what formula is this? So I just sat down and I looked at it. Uh, so. I just allow her to do whatever she wanted to do. Mm. And at the end of the day, I took their folders and I checked and it was intact. So I was like, mm. hey, then th this is sample because you taking all the <laughs> folders and taking it to their best side. And sometimes you have to go take para and take high antihypertensive. You come, you give, you go to bed too, you take another one. Then me sitting mm. down and writing all these things, the most important thing is just to be focused and look at the exact drug that you need. You'll be needed for the person at the right time. Mm. But in fact, it was it mm. was okay for some of us. So we to we learned it. We 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 were the old <laughs> star. There. We were the mm. old star there and we've worked for a long time. We and we knew mm. the right thing to be done. But when we saw this new thing, mm. it, we took it to uh, to mm. ourselves, 
especially on night duties. Mm. Uh, night duties when the place is calm and the place is somehow choked. We choose that from mm. night duties. So it's true. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. Um, Rita. So Rita will be the last person. Hello, sister. Yes. It's true. And, and it, it's always helped people. Me, for instance, mm. when I go for shifts, maybe we have five CS clients. One will be taking a mozi club by 130. The other will be taking a mozi club by 125. And mm -hmm. all we use the lens. So if you don't write it okay. down, you have to open this one, check the time the person will, will be due for the next medication. But if you write it on paper, you just look on the paper and if the, any, the person is due, you serve and you chat on the limbs. That's what I usually do. And it works. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. Um, yes. Um, I, I will not say that I have not done what they are saying. The only issue that I want to draw our attention to is the fact that you cannot chat something you have not done. Okay? You can't chat something that you have not done. Let's, let's understand that... Uh, 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 very well. You cannot chat something that you have not done. Meaning that you cannot chat a procedure if you have not done it. So if you have not administered the medication, don't chat it. That's the only thing. You can sit down and do the chat rounds and like some of us are saying, it really helps. Now that you have to use the limbs, if your facility does not have a tablet and it's a desktop, okay, you can't be going and coming one after the other. Even that you get confused, you get tired. If it is a tablet and you are moving with your tablet, then fine. But since some of our facilities, we use the, um, what do you call it, the desktop, you can sit down, do the chat rounds, get so where I used to work, we had a, an exercise, a, a, it was even a notebook. So you do the chat rounds in there, know who is taking what at what time for the whole shift. You do it like that. And when you give it, you you take. You write the time that you actually do it. And then when you are done with that procedure, you come back to your limbs and then you chat. So you don't chat before you go and do it. And let's let's get that clear. So I have I ask the students, what happens if you go to the patient bedside and the patient tells you that I don't want to take this medicine? Or you get to the patient bedside, there is no medicine. You've already chatted. How do you come back and cancel it? Okay, so let's let's um be careful. So you need to prepare before you can start the drug administration. One one of the things you can do to help you, okay, is to do a, a, a chat round. Note the drugs that the patients are on, which patients are supposed to receive which drug at what time. All right. Once you do that, you will be able to know that okay, I have to give oral medications, I have to give IM medication, IV, maybe some inhalational, some topical or, uh, or, or any other route. Then you can prepare your tray or your trolley very well. Otherwise, if you don't do some of these things, if you don't prepare, then you would see that you even be stressed, you become frustrated at the end of the day. You you didn't know you had to give IV. You get to the patient's website. That's where you get to know you have to give an IV. 
maybe the tray that you have, you don't have any any uh, syringe, you don't have any um um uh, water for injection or normal saline to reconstitute. You don't have even cannulas. What if you go and the patient's line is not patent or it's not even there? The patient had a line, but it got um there was an infiltration, so no mm. more line. You are now going to set a line. You have already reconstituted, let's say, your amoziclav. You know amoziclav, you need to give it within an hour after you have reconstituted it. How would you come back and set a line? You may get the drug spot. So you need to prepare. And one of the things you can do to prepare is to do the chat rounds. Okay. When you do your chat rounds, you know the drugs that you are going to give, the medications you are going to give, the ones that are going to produce local effects, you know. So if it is a local effect, what am I going to do? Am I going to apply? Okay, if I'm going to apply something, okay, I will need gloves to wear. So you pick your gloves. If it's a systemic effect, am I giving IM? Okay, I am. I need needles. I need syringes. I need a uh, cotton wool. I need a uh, midlater spirit. You pack, you, you set your tray accordingly. Okay. Once you do that, you also pay attention to the roots, the doses, the form of the medication, expiry dates. You check all of those things. Then you set your tray. Whilst you are preparing, you need to pay very close attention to detail. Now, in your preparation, you need to also check on your patient. Does my patient even have the line to get the IV medication? Is my patient conscious? Is the patient asleep? You need to do an assessment of your patients whilst you are doing the chat rounds. Because so when I was practicing, my ward in charge at that time, okay, I learned so much from her. I learned so much. She told me that the chat rounds, you don't do it sitting at the nurse's station. You do it from the bedside so that you get to know the state of your patient. Once you get to know the state of your patient, you finish your chat rounds. You know what to get onto your tree or your trolley for the drug administration. If you don't do that, you get to the patient's bedside. You get to know that, you no, know, this patient is unconscious, has an energy too. And the patient has to take some drug. Oh, this drug that they are taking, hey, it's diclofenacool. Hey, diclofenac tablet. It is um enteric coated. I can't administer it through the NG tube. What should I do? I can't also uh crash it. Then you are there. You are wondering what you should do for your patient. Okay. So prepare accordingly, assess your patient, know what you need to be able to administer the medication. Any technique that you have to use, please, you need to be an expert in that technique. One thing a lot of us will do, which per the infection prevention guidelines, we are not supposed to do, but we do, okay, is to use disposable gloves to administer IV medications. We all do it. I have done it several. It's just a few times in emergency wards where in the emergency ward where the children that I worked on were very sick and I wanted to be as meticulous and maintain asepsis as much as possible. That is when you see me wearing disposable a uh, uh, surgical gloves okay to administer IV medications because some of them where the IV access where you we had to be I mean as meticulous and maintain a sepsis as much as possible so that we don't reintroduce infections or a, a microorganism to cause more infections to these children who are already suffering. Okay. So we need to be able to do all of these things before we can start drug administration. 
All right. So, what are some of the things that you need to do? You have to do an assessment. Mm -hmm. Yes, as for the shortage, there will be. But when you do something and there is an issue, trust you me, the lawyer who will take you to court will not say there was a shortage. When you go to court, the judge will not say that, oh, there was a shortage or uh, there were too many patients or the, 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 um, the workload was too much. They will not say that. Too. They will go through the procedure. What were you supposed to do? They will call in experts. What does the infection prevention protocol say? They will, ask, they will look at what should have been done. Then they will come and compare what you did. And then they will, they will do their judgment. So yes, there will be, there will be shortage. Was it this class that somebody said, um, what was it? They, they had to, they reuse needles or the, the person says something. Okay. Yes, the government is not doing what they are supposed to do. That does not mean that put your license at risk. Yes, the government is not doing what they are supposed to do. That does not mean that put you, your life, that your your family, and the 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 patient at risk. Because when it comes, sir, my sister, hmm. You, you you know why there are so many now there are uh, lawyers who are midwives, there are lawyers who are nurses, doctors, lab personnel. Whom do you think they will come and and, and, and get a case? Hmm? Yes, you rob government. As for that one, it's very true. We rob the government, they will bring the gloves. Hmm? They bring the gloves, then we carry it to our house. And we don't even use it for 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 any uh, you we use it for scrubbing. Aside the other things that we, we give to our house. Abigail, please, you can unmute. Sister, thank you. Sister, please. Um my question is a bit um wayward. Like it's just about what you're talking about. Um mm -hmm. cases where you um lack the facility lack things to work with, like BP apparatus, pulsimeter and other things too even oxygen to take care of emergency cases. You don't get it. You have to struggle, run from ward to ward to get it to check to just BP or to even sustain um, a patient or to even give oxygen to a patient. In cases like that, if you, if, if you decide not to struggle, because you go to work and at the end of the day, you, you are mm. struggling about everything to work with. So if you mm. decide not to do that, but you work with what you have i'm supposed to check baby's respiration baby's um, heartbeat i don't have mm. what it takes to for me to check the uh, the heartbeat and i just take, check the temperature and then the ah, respiration okay. if in case of any problem and it goes to the court will i be blamed for something wrong yes please yes please you will um okay so let me play the devil's advocate here you were a nurse. And as nurses, I, I remember when we went to school and when our students come first year, we asked them to buy a stethoscope. We asked them to buy a, a BP monitoring apparatus, a thermometer, a pulse oximeter, a measuring tape. And we asked them to buy a, a few other things for themselves so that they, they would use them. Okay. We ask our students to buy them. Now, if your hospital is not being proactive, you, the nurse, you can be proactive. Sometimes, even the patients, some of our patients, when you explain to them that, oh, I need this to be able to work, but it is not there, all right? Some of them will go out of their way if it is um syringe they need to go and get so that you can give them injection they'll go and buy it so that you do it for them uh was it yesterday or the day before i think it was yesterday those of us who live in mass 
who have lived in Kumasi for all these years. And we have been to to Konfanochi all these years. We know how Konfanochi has been, right? It took a CEO who dared to do something different to get Otunfo to come in hmm? so that they can raise funds. They can raise funds. I will come to the documentation aspects very soon. Just hold on. To raise funds, to see to see some renovation at Confanochi. Okay. So we can be proactive. Sometimes, even talking to maybe an opinion leader in, 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 in the area. Yes, it was yesterday. Thank you. Even talking to an opinion leader in the area, you can get someone, one person to just donate a BP apparatus to your ward. When the patients come, instead of us collecting the small, small that they give to us, Maybe we can be collecting it and saving it to buy something for the world. I am, I am, I am. Some of us, we we want the 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 money for our own pockets. Yes, everyone who works deserves something. Okay, I'm not saying that um um don't do, don't collect it. Too. I'm saying that when we collect some of these things, we can. Okay. We can use it okay, to buy something small for our wards. We can. Then, in certain cases, you probably have tried your best. Uh, they are not minding you. You are not getting the things to work with. Then, documentation is very important. So, our next notes. Now that even before it was on the, on the, uh, we're using. A pen and paper. We were not writing. Now that is computer. Ah, a whole Even opening it to read patients' news cries problem for some of us. We don't want to open and read. But this is where documentation is important. If we happen to find ourselves in areas where, um, uh, um. We can't have access to some of these things. Nobody is willing to help. Okay. Documentation is very important. So you document that you needed this and this and this and this to work with. Unfortunately, this is not there. This is not there. You try to improvise. Okay. But I would advise all of us. To check a child's respiration, I don't think we need a special tool. If we don't have anything to help us check, just count the breath. Just spend a minute. Focus on the child. You'll be able to check the respirations. Get a stethoscope. And as a nurse, you, 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 it's just not only for pictures. As a midwife, the stethoscope is not only for pictures. Some of us, we have the stethoscope. We only use it to pose for pictures. We don't take it to work. But if you are going to work, you don't have a stethoscope. Ah, my sister. Or if we have brothers on the platform, my brother. Okay. Let's go to Elizabeth. Then we come back to what we are discussing this evening. Sister Lizzie, please uh, on mute. Okay. Please, my question is on the calculation of those stages. So, like, you have a client coming. Okay. Now, let me use. Um, I work at the private sector. I think these IVs are not being the clients buy them from the hospital. Okay. So, like you, you have a 
my coming with severe massive and the person is attesting it at zero twelve and twenty four hours but because they cannot afford <clears throat> you decide to either make it a start dose or you make it Hello, Elizabeth, please, can you okay. uh, stand well? Your line is breaking. So, let's say we use one twenty milligram of ten. Uh, please, can you hear me? Um, it's better Hello. now. So. Hello. It's, it's yes. Better. Okay. So I was saying that I work at a private sector where the IVs are not being paid for, but I, I sent IV flus. The remaining ones are being paid for by the patients and not and not uh, health insurance. So because when they come, they are supposed to buy. When they, you get a patient coming with complicated malaria, and the mm -hmm. person is supposed to take a testinate like 0, 12, and 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And so, so because the person cannot afford, you either choose to give the person a third dose or you give BD. And then you have calculated the person is supposed to take like one ten milligram testing but then we go to them of a testing And because <laughs> the person is taking a start dose, you decide to give the whole uh, hey. uh, milligram. That's the one twenty milligram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, uh, unfortunately, she, she seemed to have gone off. Her line is a bit bad. Um, I don't know if I heard her, uh, correctly, but she was talking about dosage calculations. Yes, we will talk about dosage calculations in detail. But if I got what she was saying, uh, well, then, um, I think she was saying that because the patient cannot afford all the three doses um she they would buy just the 120 maybe the patient is supposed to take 110 and they would administer all the 120 um as that use um you see there's a there is always a reason for or for us uh for 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 doing something so for artisanate, we use the weight in calculating the dose. So if you calculate the dose and the patient is supposed to receive a, a certain dose, you can't say that because the patient cannot afford the rest of the doses, you want to give a start dose. So you want to um, ask, ask uh, uh, someone I know very well will say, you want to shock the parasites. <laughs> You want to shock the parasite. If you want to shock the parasites, don't forget you are giving a a, a a a higher dose than the patient's weight would allow. Be ready for the side effects that would also accompany it. Okay. So my advice is go within the weights. We will talk more about calculations, but any time the drug it requires that you use the weight. Of the patient to do the calculation please don't go beyond what the weight permits you to give if she comes on or if she's on now i hope i've answered her question but i'm sure when we are discussing dosage calculations um it will it will pop up again because uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is a part that we would um talk about some of these things so, the assessment, I've already said that we need to assess um, the patient's condition. Um, we need to also uh, 
assess allergies. Allergies. Please, there are a lot of our patients and we ourselves who say we are allergic to drugs. Some of the things that we say that is they are allergies, they are not actually allergies. They are side effects that we have experienced before. When we say somebody is having an allergic reaction, which is an immune response to an allergen, um, you is, the patient will experience signs and symptoms such as uh, um, itching, having rashes, hives, uh, swelling in the throat, um, the patient's face swelling up, and that is a typical allergy. Okay. Um, but when you have nausea, when you take, like people say, oh, I'm allergic to flagell because I get nausea. That is not an allergy. It is a side effect. Please. Let's, uh, um, yes, yes. Cipro, the IV, all right? The IV, there are some people who are allergic to the IV, but not the aura. Um, Personally, I, I don't know. I will, there's nothing that will make me take Cipro IV because the first time I took it, okay, the very first time, the moment I had just a drop or two, I started itching all over. So I had to, well, I was calling my colleague nurses. They were not coming. So I had to just yank off the cannula with everything it was as the itching was in my it wasn't when i scratched my skin i it wasn't doing anything so the, i had to it, they had just started the infusion so yes there are some people who are allergic to iv cipro these patients may not be allergic to the um um the oral it may not be the cipro, the active ingredients itself. It could be something in in the um, um, the medicine. So maybe it could be um, uh, what they used to maybe make the powder or something uh, in it. Okay, that the person may be allergic to the IV, but not the A. Uh, okay, so we need to assess allergies. So you need to ask the patient. If the patient says, I am allergic, you need to find out what are the signs and symptoms you experience when you take the medicine. If they describe it and it is a true allergy, you need to document that the patient is allergic to this so that nobody uh, gives them that drug. There are some uh, drug administration that when you are going to do, you need not just a verbal consent, but written consent. If the patient is going to receive something like a, a um, they are going to do um, any of these uh, diagnostic uh, investigations like x-ray or a CT scan, a MRI, and you need to give them a, a contrast media. Um, it's a, medi a medication, it's a drug, so they need to, to sign a consent form for it. There are certain drugs that are used in cancer therapy too that you need to sign a consent for. There is also um, when they are going to receive blood, okay? Um, abdominal pain after taking oral cipro may not be an allergy. It could be a side effect. You need to just read about the side effect, okay? It could just be a side effect. Okay, so what are the rules of drug administration? Um, some of these things, I'll just rush through them. I will not spend any time on them. The first one is that you give only drugs that have been ordered. You don't give what has not been ordered. And you also don't give the drugs because they have been ordered. The, um, if the the order is questionable, if the order is questionable, um, if some of your colleagues are finding it difficult to join, um, I'm not sure 
the problem is here. It could be that the problem is coming from their end. Okay. It's from their end because this is a thousand capacity and we are only 501. Okay. This is a thousand capacity. It can take up to thousand. Right. So it could be from maybe their their network. Okay. It's their network. Um dizziness would be a side effect, not uh, an allergy. Mm. Okay. Um it's it could be the network. All right, let me go on. Um so no kusum, I don't know how in your facilities how you call it, but where I've practiced, they call it kusum. Sometimes you know that oh, this patient's condition, if I give them this drug, it has not been prescribed. But if I give it to them, <laughs> it works. So um let's not do kusum. Okay. Um it doesn't also mean that we should give all medications that have been ordered. The moment um, they have been ordered, um, the prescriber has ordered it, we should give it. You need to, if it is, is the, the, the prescription is not clear, please, you need to question it, okay? You need to question the prescription. If you think that um, it is wrong, the prescription is wrong, whether the route is wrong, the form is wrong for the patient, the dose is wrong, whatever is wrong, please do not give it, okay? If you give it and there's trouble for you, you are the only one who face the trouble, okay? Let's try as much as possible. Let's wash our hands. Uh, sometimes we can go 10 patients. You won't wash your hands, okay? Uh, you won't wash your hands and then um, you move from one patient to the other wearing gloves, changing gloves. Then you use your gloves to touch the medicine, your powdered hand to touch the medicine and give it to another patient. Please, it is not done. You contaminate the drug. So please, um, focus on the tax, avoid distractions. These days, the antennas, the uh, um, MMA programs in the afternoon. You see that you, people are on the ward and they are watching YouTube movies while they are preparing medication. They are listening to delay show while they are preparing medications. They are doing this, they are doing that while they are preparing medications. Please, let's stop all those things. It will not help us. Calculate your doses carefully. Do not leave any medication unattended. If someone has done the preparation, don't administer it. Check the label. Check um, expiry dates. If the labeling is not clear, you can't see it. Don't use it. Make sure you observe aseptic techniques. Um, don't crash tablets that are, or are not crashable. Or open capsules without checking with your pharmacist or checking whether they can be crushed or opened. Please, don't. Don't touch capsules like your bare hands. Don't use your bare hands to touch capsules. Neither should you. Um, neither should you use uh, your, your gloved hand to touch capsules or tablets. We open it from the blister into a medicine cup. Or, or a spoon, or you use a spoon to pick it from the um, envelope, whether it's a paper envelope or the rubber envelope, the medicine is in. Use a spoon to pick it and then put it in the medicine cup or leave it on the spoon for your patient. Do not touch the medicine with your bare hands, which sometimes you don't even wash. A lot of us contaminate and introduce microorganisms into our patients when we do that, okay? Um, the alerts for drugs with similar names and similar colors, okay? Similar names and then colors. And then also make sure you put the 
uh, you re uh, you recap the drafts um that are in their containers you close the envelopes um that um they come in please there are medications that you can store in the fridge and there are ones you cannot store it's important that you read the drug information leaflet to know how long you can store it where you should store it um most of the ones that are in the ampules like uh frosimide gentamicin um diazepam um those ones you can keep in a well labeled syringe after you've taken a quantity of it you can keep it in a, a well labeled syringe cock it so put the um needle a clean needle in, um, uh, on it label it the drug name the date it was opened the quantity that is left the time it was opened if it's for a particular patient add the patient's name keep it away from sunlight uh, on a clean um, um surface or in your medicine a uh, container or trolley all right away from sunlight where it is also not hot and you can keep it there for between 24 to 48 hours it will still be good to use after that you need to discard it then we have once you have to keep in the fridge once you have to use immediately iv at sonate iv amoziclav use immediately don't store it you read the, the information leaflet it's clearly stated use immediately do not store there are some you can store sephrozyme uh, keftrazone um clindamycin um um which one there are quite a number of them you can store okay in the fridge between two to eight degrees in the fridge you can store it um for some of them up to a maximum of 72 hours the moment you see a discoloration you throw it away it was clear or the color was light or pale yellow now is that brown do you use it okay so please let's note these things and read about the drug itself you would see that you need to keep it this uh, under this condition you see the storage under storage they will tell you how to um keep it for ampicillin um for ampicillin i am not sure i know that most of the penicillins you use immediately okay i would have to check for ampicillin but it's easy please Check the information leaflet that comes with it and it will tell you. But I'll check anyway and get back to you. Okay. Um exposure to sunlight. Is it the exposure? What does it mean? So you should not expose the drug to direct sunlight. It means that where you are keeping your medications. The um sunshine should not be the um it should not be directly on it. So you check uh, uh, your um what do you call it? You you check your your watch, and then you look at the direction of the sun. If it's, it's shining at a particular place, that is not where you should keep your medicines. Okay, you should keep it away from a uh, sunlight so the syrups the suspensions you need to also read on it for some of them you don't need to keep in the fridge some you actually most of the suspensions the ones you reconstitute as for those ones you need to keep it in the fridge um if you don't even if the patient does not have a fridge it can get a a cold cold water or cold water keep it at a corner in their house where it's quite cold and keep on changing the water as often as possible within the seven or ten days it will be safe to use okay all right um uh, i hope i've i've covered 
Uh, there was another question. Let me see. Uh, yes, the syrups. I think I've covered that already. For ampicillin, I would have to check. I am not too sure of it. I would have to, to check for storage on ampicillin. I will let you know. Okay. I will let you know. So, appropriate um, body surface uh, measures. Appropriate uh, body uh, uh, substance isolation measures. You need to take that. Um, don't wake up. When you don't have to, don't do it. If you get your shafts, they are all, you see, some of these things, we take them for granted. But they need to be, ahem, I mean, you need to do the things right. Okay. To administer, so on the rules, identify your patient correctly. Um, yes, you can mention the patient's name. You can also let the patient mention their name to you, but always have the patient chat with, with you, okay, to confirm that um, it is the right patient. Observe the patient following administration. You are observing therapeutic response, side effects, okay, Anything that the patient may experience, adverse reaction, allergies, whatever it is, you need to observe the patient after you have administered the drug. Don't just give it and then go your way. Educate the patient. Let the patient know what to expect, what not to expect, what they should do when they see something that you didn't tell them to expect, whom they should do for. All of that should be well um, expressed to your patient. Uh, report any errors to the ward, your ward in charge. Don't keep it, all right? And make sure you document properly. Any orders that you think are questionable, question it. Okay. Listen to your patient. Listen to a, your patient. Uh, there was a time that a lady nearly, nearly, nearly caused a huge error. Apparently, one of the nurses had come to her to administer her medications. Then another nurse came in. Because the two nurses were, at, were not on talking terms, um, the other one didn't tell the patient that, oh, I've done the medications in this room. So when she came, she was in another area of the world doing medication. She didn't say anything. Went to pick that room and started doing it. So the first, first patient that she went to uh, told the, the, the nurse that, um, which, asked the nurse, which medicine are you, uh, giving me okay which medicine are you giving me and um, the nurse then just said oh um i'm coming to give you this medication and showed it to the patient and the patient said oh i've been giving this medication already she was not listening to the patient and the patient was insisting i've been giving this medicine she was still not and, and she was insisting the patient take the medication and the patient was quite uh, bold. It became a fight. That the nurse was like, please, the patient um, does not respect, is talking back at her and blah, 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 blah. So took one of the other patients to come and uh, sort of calm them down and then talk to the, the nurse that, oh, your other colleague has come here and given us our medication. So please listen to it. That was when she she realized that, oh, she was about to make a huge mistake. Sometimes, let's listen to our patients. We are still discussing the roots of drug administration. So if you are giving the patients, please, anytime you are administering IV medications, okay, if we don't administer using the push stop, push 
stop and we go ahead and push everything at once. Excuse me. It can cause the patient to vomit. So some of them is just a side effect. Okay. It's just a side effect. Um, and you know that the IV medications, when you administer, you start, uh, um, when they are doing it, you start tasting it in your mouth. So for some of the patients, it's because of the taste that comes out that they will vomit. And um, for coughing, some of them can't, the smell and those things, they can cough, but it is usually just a side effect. Okay. Okay. Concentrate on one tax. We are still looking at the rules. Okay. Now, this is what I've been saying. The nurse or midwife who is preparing and administering the, administering the drug, you are responsible for the procedure. It's, it's not the doctor who prescribed the wrong dose. It's not your colleague who didn't prepare it well. You, the one who administered it, you are responsible for the procedure. Okay. Um, quickly, um, please, I wanted us to go through the 10 rights, but um, because I have a short quiz for you, okay, a short quiz, we will end here next week, God willing, we will continue, and I want you to try as much as possible to go through the, the slides, okay, these are straightforward things that you can easily read and understand. So next week, we'll just rush through some of it and then we'll talk about dosage calculations, okay? Dosage calculations. So next week, God willing, please get a sheet of paper, okay? Or an exercise book ready. Get your pen and then get a simple calculator. We'll do some calculations, all right? We'll do some calculations. Now, this is how the quiz is going to be. I am going to share a link with you. Please do not, I am repeating myself, do not copy the link and go and put it on the Telegram page. I am repeating myself. Don't copy the link from here and put it on the Telegram page page okay please i hope you are following whilst we are i'm going to get you the link please if you have any question you can ask if you have any question at all you can ask me but whilst i am doing that kindly 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 Wait for the quiz, okay? Wait for the quiz, the link to the quiz. I am going to put it on the Telegram page in a few minutes. Any question, please. Nobody should copy the link I am going to paste here and put it on the Telegram page. Okay. Nobody should copy the link and put it on the Telegram page. And don't copy it. Don't think that I will not see it. So you would copy it and then go and put it there uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. Please. Be very, very careful. All right. So I'm going to share the link with you in a couple of minutes. If you have any question, you can easily ask. Okay, I see Teria and um, Mariam. And please, you can unmute. I will be answering. Hello, sister. Yes, dear. Please, my name is exit me out. I didn't get what you said about the quiz. Please. Oh, I said 
I am going to send you a link. You click on the link. I I will put, I'm coming to put it in your chat. So you click on the link. Okay. And then you select your answer. You you go through the quiz. All right. You go through the uh, quiz. Yes. But do okay. not copy it. A lot of us did not attend the lectures. And I don't want you to copy. I'm saying that don't copy it and post it on the Telegram page. Mm, okay. That's what I said. So it's just okay. a few questions that I am giving you. Just a few. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's just a few questions that I am going to give you. It's based on what you have already um, um, linked. Just a few questions, not many. Any other question whilst we are here? Any question? Whilst we are waiting, if you have any question, please, you can ask. I am trying to, to send it to you. Just a minute. We will discuss the questions. So, um, please. I won't discuss it today. It's, um, what do I say? It's, it's time. So when you finish, I will share the um, scores with you. And then God willing, next week when we meet, we'll yeah, so the questions are not many. Okay. So that we can, it's just general, some general questions on what we have uh, done so far. Just a couple of questions. Um, Okay, so there's a very short quiz. Kindly click on the link. I have just shared it and I'll keep sharing it until you see. So I'm sharing it. Please, when you see it, click on it. It will take you to a page. I am monitoring it. Okay, I am monitoring it. So when you see the link, please click on it. Just double click for some of you, your computer or your laptop, you have to double click or for the phone, just one click. It will take you to a set of questions. Please just start answering them. There are only six questions, the questions themselves, but it will require that you type in your name, you type in your, your, um, your, index number and then you you select your center i'm doing that for um security purposes some of you type you may type whilst you are typing you may type a wrong index number if you you identify it you come back to me i can get you to i can use your name okay to compare if you have seen the link you can just click on it and log. You can go out of the Zoom, okay? Um, I'll I'll keep it the Zoom on till eight thirty, okay? So please click on it. Start answering just six questions, just six questions. When you see the link, just click on it. Answer those six questions. Is the one who is saying that the link is failing. Log in, please. You are not supposed to log in anything. You are supposed to just click on the link. When you click on it, it will not ask you to log in to it. It will not ask you to log in. You just, it will take you straight to the questions. 
no login required. So please, this is not about logging in. So that you come and say, and I cannot log in. You are not supposed to log in anything. You are just, when you click on it, it should take you to a page. Let me, um, so please, those who are saying login field, login field, you are not supposed to have any login field. Please, it will come. Look at the questions. It will come. For some of you, when you open, is the first thing you will see. Look at the questions. When you click on the link, it will take you to... Some of you are now joining. Please, I've shared the link. It hasn't vanished. I've just shared it again. Please, it is timed. It is timed. So please. If your browser is not Google, then it will ask you to go through Google or Chrome. Please note that it is timed. When it is time, it would go off. I've already started receiving responses. Please, you can't enter your index number. Maybe you have not uh, you have not a labeled num lock or its network. I don't know, but Google Form network is not a problem. Google Form is not like the V class that you use for exams. The midsem Google Form network is not a problem. To be honest with you, network is not a problem. Please click on the space that is there. You should be able to type in your name and index number. When that question pops up, you should be able to do that. I've started receiving responses. I have nine already. I have started receiving responses and I'll show you in just a minute. So that those of you who are saying that and I can't, it is like this, it is like that. Please, they are all excuses. It is working very well, very, very well. Right now we have 22 responses. Let me show you. Those of you who are still on On the Zoom, this is what you would, this is what I am seeing. It has moved to 35. See the rate at which it is going. Mm -hmm. Look at the rate at which it is going. If you can see my screen, all right. Now, 47 responses, 50. Josephine, I don't know if you have finished. If you have not, I, I suggest you continue. Try and do it. After that, we can, you can come back with your question. Okay. I suggest you go on. 
please, I have shared the link many, many, many times. And I continue to share the link. I've just shared it again. I am sharing it. 72 responses, 75. And we are going 84. Hundred and eleven responses now. The moment by the time I even say it, it is it has jumped up. I hope you read the instructions. The time is almost up. Two hundred and ten responses. is when you tap on the link, double click. If you your phone, you do one tap and it doesn't open. Double click. And when you do that, wait for it to load. When it goes off, it is loading. So if you say you, you click on go back, it will take you back to the page. Okay, so please. When it's, you click on it, wait for it to load. Now I have 332 responses. Three hundred and thirty two responses. No, three hundred and forty eight. Then it means that, please, if you click on submit and it takes you back to the questions, it means that you didn't, uh, you have not entered uh, your name, your index number, or you've not selected the, the study center. So it will, it requires that you s do that again. You, you select because without that, if you don't select these three or you don't enter it, then you will not be able to um, uh, submit the form. 
currently I have 450 people who have responded. Yes. I will share for you to see. Four hundred and sixty-five, sixty-nine. As you can see, it is going. Sister Anastasia and uh, patience. I hope you are done. You are done with your question. I. We have raised your hand. Not that I don't want to let you speak. You will speak. But I want to make sure that you are not wasting the time to come here. Please, you are supposed to have sent you the link. The one who was requesting for the link. I've shared it. Please. Patience, you cannot mute. Sister, I have done everything, but I... If I choose the tag card, it's not selecting. Please. I am done, but if I select the tag card, it's not selecting. So I can't submit. I've done, I'm click done on, one time. Click on the circle well, please. Click okay. on it well. Anastasia. Anastasia. Please, you can unmute. Thank you, sister. Please, uh, I'm done. I'm done with my submission. But okay. some sisters are still behind complaining they can't Please. still join. Sister, then I, 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 I don't know what is making them not be able to join. And if they can't join, how do they do their quiz? Because it's not the Zoom capacity. And I have 542 responses now. You see, it is not the Zoom that they can't join. I don't, if they can't join the Zoom, how can they do the quiz? I am not taking the AE uh, out of the quiz, uh, the, the link to anywhere. Dockers, please, you can unmute. Hello, sister. Yes, please. Hello. Please, uh, after submitting my work, uh, I went to view accuracy. After that, it has brought me back to the page again. Uh, which Hello. page? Once you submit, that is all. If it takes you back to the the page, it's because you clicked on, on it. That's why. Okay, so thank you, sister. Then you saw that... Your submission has been responded. It has been recorded. That's all. Okay, thank you. Um Amina Datsu. Ami Ami Datsu, you can unmute. Uh please, it's the same question I wanted to ask because when I submit, it sends me back to the page. But since you've answered it, thank you. Thank you. Christina Ampa, you can unmute. Yes, sister, please. I submitted it and it took me to the work again. So I don't did know you whether see I that do your it again. response has been. Did you see that your response has been recorded? Yes, sister, but please, I've done it again. Did you, so when you submitted the first one, did you mm -hmm. see your response has been recorded? Yes, sister. Then why did you submit again? Anyway, it will mm -hmm. come. You see the number of times you have submitted. Don't worry. Okay, thank you, sister. Austina, please, you can unmute. Okay. So, I've given all of us extra time. 
Hello, sister. More Please. Than extra this time. Are... Costina. Yes. <laughs> my this Irene Musa. My center Irene. is wa, but when I chose it, they said it's wrong. So I don't know whether oh. even my index number two is wrong. Who said it is wrong? The 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 phone. <laughs> Your like phone says that it's <laughs> and the mark came is indicating when you submitted. Did you yes. see that your response has been recorded? Did it come? Yes, please. Then that is all. There's no way. <laughs> How do we mark your index number? Nobody will mark no, your index. Please, uh, what I'm saying is like the questions you answer correct, you will get them. So through that, you will see there's red. Indication of a what is it? A star mm. for the things you've the, gotten. The star, no, 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 no. Okay, there are three things you are required to oh, do. Okay, if okay, you don't okay. Do them, you cannot submit. You need to put okay. down your name, your index number, and select your center. Your center. If you don't do three, you cannot submit. Okay, thank so you. It is not wrong. Is gone. Mm, that is recording. Thank you. Abigail, Adakwa, last person, then we'll end the class because I've given all of us more than necessary time to do this. Abigail, please, you can unmute. Abigail. Hello, Abigail, can you hear me? All right, maybe Abigail is having a Sister, challenge. Please, I've also submitted twice because submitted first. someone um, complained that she submitted and it took her back to the question. And he said, mm -hmm. It's because yes, more past them. It's because more past them. Hmm? It comes, your response has been recorded. Hello. Then you, you click on the view, view accuracy. When you click on it, it will take you back to the questions, but not the answers. Okay? It's because you select, you click on the view accuracy. You are not supposed to do that. when, you, Or you click on back. When you do that, then you will not see it. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I have uh, given all of us more than enough time to do these just these six questions you needed only three minutes but we have all used about 22 minutes so i am ending it and then i am going to end so as you can see now anybody who will submit this is the message that will come this form is no longer accepting responses Okay, I am going to share the results on on your on the Telegram page. Look out for your index number and your score. Okay, um, if you have any question, come to the page. Let's discuss. It's there. It's almost nine p.m. We are ending the class. Thank you for joining me. I can see hands. Please come to the page. And I want to let you know that once you submitted and you saw your response has been recorded. It has been recorded. Thank you. If you don't see it, okay, if you don't see that message, your response has been recorded, then you will not see your name in the list. All right. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. We'll continue our discussions, God willing, next week. And a quick reminder, next week when you are coming, come with a book, an exercise book, um, a sheet of paper, um, a, pen, a pen, and a simple calculator. Thank you very much and enjoy your, the rest of your weekend. God bless you.